Ann Walker, and our presentation is to justify the Campbell Statement on Diabetes mellitus and Vagina Study. The Campbell's thesis statement is that a high-carb, low-fat diet, a plant-based diet, may help to prevent diabetes. To prove that Campbell's argument is, on diabetes is justifiable, we look further into four studies that they reference in the China study. The first article of evidence we analyzed was titled, The Association Between Diet and Cancer, Ischemic Heart Disease, and All-Cause Mortality in Non-Hispanic White California Seventh-day Adventists. This was a cross-sectional cohort study and it involved 34,192 California seven-day Adventists. Frazier, the researcher for the study, wanted to determine if there was a difference between disease frequencies in non-meat-eating seven-day Adventists and those who consumed meat on a regular basis. Participants in the study were given a census questionnaire on 51 different foods and food groups to identify different types of eating habits among them. Frazier concluded that the vegetarian seven-day Adventists had lower risk of diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, and other chronic diseases. Frazier's findings suggested that certain dietary factors, such as fiber and fat consumption, influence the risk and longevity of certain chronic diseases. The vegetarians had lower risk of obesity and diabetes due to the greater consumption of fruit, vegetables, and nuts, and their decreased consumption of animal proteins and fats. The individuals who consumed a whole foods plant-based diet had significantly lower risk of getting many chronic diseases. The Campbells included this article in their research to help emphasize how vegetarians are half as likely to get diabetes compared to meat eaters. The Seventh-day Adventists were an interesting group to study, not only because they were vegetarians, but also because they did not consume alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. These dietary behaviors supported the Campbell's thesis that a whole foods plant-based diet without dietary toxins such as alcohol can help to contribute to a life without chronic disease. These conclusions may have been flawed in regards to the information collected from the questionnaire due to misinformation on dietary habits. The Seventh-day Adventists may fear religious persecution for not allowing a strict vegetarian diet and and also in regards to the China study, the evidence provided by this article appears to be relevant and an acceptable form of information. The second uh, study we covered what was titled High Fat, Low Carb Diet and the Etiology of Non-Insulin Dependent Diabetes Mellitus. This was an observational study that um, ended up supporting their hypothesis that stated that a high fat diet and low carb diet increase the risk of non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus and decrease glucose intolerance. The participants were 30 to 70 years of age and it included 1,300 of them. They divided the participants into three different groups um, based on their insulin requirements. So there was a non-insulin dependent group, a normal glucose tolerant group, and those with impaired glucose tolerance. Um, they assessed the patients or the client or the participants with um, glucose tests, seven-day physical logs, and 24-hour recalls with um, measurement aids. In conclusion, uh, they discovered that the increase of fat per day would increase the person's risk of glucose intolerance. Um, they stated that 40 grams of extra fat a day would increase a person's risk of glucose intolerance by 62%. The limitations in the studies, they could have had a wrong glucose test due to an inadequate carbohydrate preparation, and that some uh, like all the participants were from one specific area in Colorado, so it couldn't be generalized to other states or other populations. Some of the benefits include that it was such a large sample size that it reduced the day-to-day -day diet variation, and um, in addition, uh, many other studies uh, had supporting evidence that included both animal studies and human studies. Um, this particular study suggested that a randomized clinical trial be performed on the same stuff to determine and to enhance the association between the low-carb and high-fat diets to type 2 diabetes. The third article we included was titled, Increased Incidence of Non-Insulin-Dependent Diabetes mellitus among Japanese school children correlate, correlates with an increased intake of animal protein. The research believed that the increased consumption of animal fats and proteins within the Japanese population 
combined with their low levels of physical activity, may have intensified their glucose intolerance and insulin resistance. And the subjects in the study were Tokyo school children, and they were tested annually for glycosuria by using glucose oxidase tapes to test for diabetes. And the study showed that the increase in the non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in school children seem more closely related to the increase in their animal product consumption rather than to the increase in the children's um, intake or energy intake or the prevalence of obesity. And uh, the authors of the China study included this article in their research because it supported the idea that increased consumption of animal fats and proteins increases a person's chance of developing diabetes. And there are a few limitations to the study, one being that no reliable data was provided to prove the cause for increase of non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in the children, therefore the authors can't draw conclusions from this. And then our fourth article involved two studies and it was titled Hypolipidemic Effects of High Carb, High Fiber Diets. And both the studies within this article had the same subjects and they were men with diabetes. And the researchers in the first study examined changes in fasting serum cholesterol and triglyceride levels of the subjects fed the high, or high carbohydrate, high fiber diet. And then in the second uh, study, the researchers compared the effects of the controls, which were the high carb, low fiber diets, to the high fiber, high carbohydrate diet on postprandial cholesterol and triglyceride levels. And the conclusion of both of the studies was that the high, high carbohydrate, high fiber diet was associated with lower insulin doses, lower plasma glucose values, and lower cholesterol values. And this showed that dietary maneuvers can be effective in lowering serum cholesterol in patients with diabetes. Um, one of the limitations to this article is that further studies are required to determine how diet acts to reduce insulin requirements and the short and long-term effects of the use of the HCF diet, which is the high carbohydrate, high fiber diet, may lead to unacceptable rises in fasting triglyceride levels due to the increased consumption of carbohydrates. And this, they chose to include this article in the, in the China study to show that both type 1 and type 2 diabetes can be treated by a high carbohydrate, high fiber, low fat diet. The conclusions. Uh, strengthening evidence, all of the studies that were cited in the China study were um, published by highly qualified researchers in the medical field. And um, certain limitations that were possible, such as confounding variables, were mentioned in each of the studies if it affected the results. So that way that could be taken into consideration. <clears throat> the studies Campbell's used covered a wide variety of populations and not just studies done from the same area. So it, there were various countries done. Um, the insufficient evidence, uh, some of the articles were over 30 years old, so may not account for medical advancements. And the cross-sexual studies that were mentioned are not easily generalizable. Um, it's also hard to determine if disputing evidence uh, articles were overlooked because they didn't support the Campbell's thesis. Um, the authors of the China study accurately supported their thesis with supporting evidence. However, more research needs to be conducted to strengthen the correlation between a high-fiber, high-carb, low-fat, plant-based diet